Hello humans of 45A and welcome back to Read Aloud Corner with Miss Stewart. It's been so long since we read together. I'm going to do a quick chapter review of chapter 9 and then jump right into chapter 10. So remember how Christy and Catherine were going to play with each other and that Catherine actually decided to miss going to the clinic. Jason then gave a special gift to her guinea pigs of the carrots, and Catherine felt really guilty for missing the appointment, especially when she had made a promise she was going to go. So remember how she had said she knew of a perfect way to try to make it up to Jason? And we had talked about what would that perfect way be? Let's see if we can find the answer. Chapter 10. If it fits in your mouth, it's food. Tuesday, I bring something to the clinic I've never brought before. Something that means I need to leave the top of my backpack unzipped and instead of swinging it to my shoulder, I carry it very carefully in my arms. Jason is already there when I arrive, his wheelchair parked next to my usual spot on the couch. Hi! I sit beside him, arranging my backpack on my lap. Thanks for the carrots! Did guinea pig like? They thought they were awesome! In fact, I pull my backpack zipper all the way down. A furry, eager face pops out. What's up? And more to the point, what's for lunch? Pellets? Carrots? Ooh, is that carpeting down there? This is nutmeg, I say, cradling her against my chest. And she says, thanks for the carrots. Nutmeg has chocolate brown fur, glossy black eyes, and a friendly personality. Of my two guinea pigs, I figured she'd be more tolerant of Jason's sudden movements and noises. Jason's mouth hangs slack. Would you like to pet her, I say? She might squeal, but she doesn't bite. Awesome! Nutmeg walks across Jason's communication book. She sniffs the air and poops on Van. Sorry! I jump to grab a tissue from the box on the receptionist's desk. Nutmeg, what kind of hello is that? Gross. Hello. I clean Jason's book. You can say that again. Gross. Hello. Very funny. I reach into the front pocket of my backpack. Speaking of jokes, I made words for you. When I look up, Jason is stroking Nutmeg's back with his fingertips. I can see by the clutch of Jason's jaw how hard he's struggling to control his movements, not to frighten her. When he brings his hand away, he's trembling. I pretend not to notice, afraid it will embarrass him. This first card is joke. I thought you could use this word when you're telling a joke or being sarcastic to make sure the other person knows you're kidding. Like word. And this is whatever. I lean over to whisper. It's good for annoying your mother. At least it has that effect on mine. I demonstrate, swinging my glaze to the ceiling. Whatever. Jason grins. Good job. Whatever. I move nutmeg over so I can slide the cards word after word into Jason's book. And this is secret. I thought sometimes we might want to talk about something without other people hearing us. When one of us taps secret, we'll switch to only using your cards. Want to try it? Yes. I look around for something to talk about. Out the window, a man hurries across the parking lot, his beagle on a leash. Do you see that guy, I ask, pointing? Let's imagine who he is. The man dashes past the windows. The beagle trots beside him, head down, sniffing. Jason taps, late for dog show. I give Jason a thumbs up. Good job. My turn. I imagine the man and his dog as a perfect spy team, too ordinary to be noticed. But Jason doesn't have spy, or secret agent, or even mysterious. Searching Jason's book, Man is a Secret, is the best I can do. I was imagining them as a secret agent, I say finally. Maybe we can talk about music instead. Yes. I pull my CD player from the front pocket of my backpack. This is my favorite CD. Putting the headphones over Jason's ears isn't as awkward as last time, but I still fight the urge to shiver as his hair brushes my fingers and the backs of my hands. Who? Music. I check his book, but of course there's no card. It's... Jason taps, secret. I clamp my hand over my mouth. Don't speak. Catherine, make, word, who? I don't have a blank card, so I remove goodbye from Jason's book and draw on the back. It's not a great picture of Avril Lavigne, but I'm in a hurry. I don't bother to slide in Jason's book. Just lay the card on top. It's a temporary word, and he'll need goodbye more. 
Jason studies the picture, headphones on, music playing, Avril Lavigne, stupid. What? I startle, nutmeg into skittering across Jason's book. Jason grins, choke. I dip my head in my best imitation of my mom's no-nonsense look. You think you're funny, do you? Do ya? I lift one side of my headphones so he'll hear me better. My next card is going to say, you big jerk. Secret. I spoke again. I bite my tongue to keep from using it and scan my wor word choices, lifting nutmeg to see what she's sitting on. Jason taps, like Avril Lavigne. Me too, is all I can find to say. Hi, Jason. Jason scolds as I take the headphones off his ears. Speech woman, yell, all the time. He taps, I can't talk, but I can hear fine. Hi, Jason, his therapist repeats louder. How's his day been going, he says to his mother. Jason's hand moves, loud day. What a sweet little animal, the speech therapist says. But what's it doing? A glance at Nutmeg, busy chewing the edge of goodbye. I lunge for her. I'm sorry, Jason. He smiles. Oh, bye, guinea pig. Watching his therapist push Jason's chair down the hallway, I hold Nutmeg against my chest, stroking her back with my fingertips. Could we stop at the mall on the way home, I ask Mom. I need cardstock and paper cutter. Jason needs so many words. <laughs>